I will probably give you an idea of where I'm going as a little man meets a big God. I heard a story about a preacher one time, and I'll make it clear I'm not a preacher from the start. I heard a story about a preacher one time, and he was visiting a vacant church. And he was there all day. He was at the morning service and the evening service, and he was shaking hands with the folks as he was leaving. And uh, there was a wee boy come along and tell him, shook hands with him. And he, he said to him, he says, Hey, mister, when I grow up, he says, I'm going to give you some money. Oh, thank you very much, said the preacher. And why would that be? And he says, well, my dad says you're the poorest preacher that we've ever had. <laughs> so, so hopefully it'll not be like that tonight. I do feel a bit like throwing in at the deep end, like the boy that went to the swimming pool and jumped in at the deep end. He says, it's either sink or swim. So tonight I feel like it's either sink or swim. And you know, by the grace of God and the power of God, that will be swimming tonight. And you know, it is God's word. And sometimes uh, it's good to get into his word. And it's always a joy and a privilege indeed to share a word. Sometimes I share down at the home. And you know, I must admit, it is enjoyable you know, to, to get into God's Word and study it, because, you know, He reveals things to you whenever you're studying God's Word, and it's always lovely to be in His Word. And as I said to you, you know, it's like jumping into a swimming pool. Sometimes you've got to jump in to know the power of God within your life. Sometimes we can sit back and want to be comfortable, and it's not always the way. Sometimes we've got to step out in faith and trust that God will lead us and guide us. He can do new things in our lives if we only sometimes but step out. So I trust and pray this evening as I relay God's message this evening as he has placed it upon my heart that you will indeed be blessed and indeed challenged through his word this evening. As I said, the title, A Little Man Meets a Big God. Our reading is from Luke 19, verse 1 to 10. Luke chapter 19 and verse 1 to 10. Zacchaeus is the little man. I'm sure you've all worked that one out. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus who he was, and he could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up, and he saw him, and he said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste, and he came down, and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he is going to be the guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For so much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. What a lovely verse to end our reading with there this evening. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Look, look is the writer here, and Luke has wrote down this, and this is if you the one of these Bibles where Jesus' word is all written in red, you'll find that this is red. This is Jesus speaking here, and Jesus, uh, Luke records Jesus' words that he is saying that he has come to seek and to save that which is lost. Who is the lost? Well, the Bible tells us clearly that we're all lost. We're all born in sin, shaping in iniquity. Uh, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3 and 23 tells us that. And you know that tells us 
if there's sin in our lives that we're separated from God, we'll not be able to enter into God's heaven because there is no sin there. And that is, is one of the most important things as, he, as we read that in verse 10. And how did God come to seek and to save? He sent Jesus and he died in that old rugged cross. And he shed his blood there, his forgiveness at the cross. And if you come to the cross this evening, you ask Jesus into your hearts, you know there you'll find that mercy there was great and grace is free. And indeed, he will come in and he'll come in to stay. So if you hear nothing else I say tonight, hear that Jesus has come to seek and to save the lost. In verse 1 of this uh, in verse 1 of this here, we read about Jesus entering and passing through Jericho. And I'm going to use uh, three simple headings this evening. The first one is the searching sinner, and the second one is the seeking Savior, and the third, the spectacular salvation. By way of introduction in verse 1, we see Jesus is traveling. It says how that he has entered and passed through Jericho. Jesus was about 33 now, and he's on his final uh, journey through Judea, and he's coming through Jericho, and this is probably only a few months before the crucifixion. And he's coming through Jericho, and he goes on, on into Bethany and into Jerusalem, and then in Jerusalem, then we'll have the Last Supper, and we have the Garden of Gethsemane where he's betrayed, the trial, and the crucifixion. So this is Jesus with his face set as a flint to Jerusalem, passing through Jericho. In verse 2 to verse 4, we there see the searching sinner. There was a lot of people there that said that, that Zacchaeus couldn't see Jesus because of the crowds. Crowds of people, all there for their own reason. Probably some there, maybe like blind Bartimaeus, wanted to get the sight restored. Maybe some there, like the leper, wanted to be healed from the disease. Maybe some was bringing a sick friend to Jesus, like the par paralytic man. Maybe others just wanted to be there to see this Jesus who had done so much and heard so much about him. And they thought that they would just want to go along. In Matthew 4 and verse 23 to 25, I read this, don't worry about turning to it. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments and those which possessed with the devils, and those which were lunatic, and those which had a palsy. And he healed them. And there followed him a great multitude of people from Galilee, and from Decapolis, and from Jerusalem, and from Judea, and from beyond Jordan. So we can see lots of people were wanting to follow Jesus. And in verse 2, then we read about the search and sinner. And we read there in verse Two, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. So in verse 2, we see there the search and sinner. Now, Zacchaeus was there for a different reason. He, it says there that he would come to see Jesus and who he was. But you know, Zacchaeus was there because, not of a physical problem, but because of a sin problem. He, there was something lacking and missing within his heart that he uh, couldn't know the problem for. But he wanted to come and see Jesus and see who he was. It's not often through the uh, Gospels that we read of people coming because of their sin to Jesus, mostly, mostly because of physical problems. The only other one I can think of at the minute is probably Nicodemus. And he came to Jesus, and as the wee song put it, that he came to Jesus by night to ask him the way of salvation and light, and the master 
made answer in words through and plain, ye must be born again. But in verse 2, as I say, we see the case, and it says that he was rich. This man was a wealthy man, and his name in Hebrew means pure and righteous. And his name might have meant that, but certainly he didn't stack up to anything like that or anything close to it because of the job that he had uh, as a tax collector he was far from anything like that as a tax collector who worked for the Roman government he was considered a traitor by the Jewish people nobody liked this man and the fact was that he worked for the HRMC if you like to put it into our language and uh, I heard a story about a guy and uh, he he was opening up a new gym, a new fitness center. And the way it was with him, he, he didn't have enough people coming in. So he thought he would set a, comp a competition up. And he set up this competition. And uh, what it was, he was going to squeeze a lemon. And he was going to squeeze it, and all the juice would run out of it. And then he would hand that over tell whoever wanted to try it to see if they could squeeze any more out of the lemon. And if anyone got one drop out of it, he paid them a thousand pound. And this was his idea of getting people into the, into the, the leisure centre or whatever it was. But many people tried, and they tried and they tried, but no one got a drop out of it. All these big muscle men and whatever else. And uh, along come a little skinny guy one day, and he says, I want to go, I want to take up your challenge and try that. So the owner of the establishment, he went and he got this lemon, squeezed it all out, and he handed the wrinkled remains back over to this wee skinny man. And the wee skinny man, he took the lemon, and he squeezed with all his might, one drop, two drops, three drops, four drops, he squeezed out of the lemon. The boy couldn't believe it. A wee skinny man like that. Oh, he says, I'm going to have to pay this guy a thousand pounds. So he sat down, he wrote out the cheque, and when he was handing him over the, when he was handing over the cheque to the man, he said, can I ask you what you do for a living? And he says, yeah, sure. He says, I work for the HMRC. So there you go. That's what them boys do. And there was another story I read. This, this is actually a true letter that I actually come in to the IRS, which is which is the same as our HRMC, if you like. And the letter came in, and it, was, it said on it, enclosed you'll find a cheque for $150, remember, in America. I cheated on my income tax last year, and I've not been able to sleep ever since. If, you've, if I still have trouble sleeping, I'll send you the rest. <laughs> so, so as you can see, not everybody is honest about these things. But there's one thing about Zacchaeus. Nobody was going to cheat him. Zacchaeus, I tell you, he was the opposite end of the foot. He was squeezing everything he could out of the people for his own benefits. Uh, whenever we go away to the, whenever we come on down the chapter, we read about how he was going to pay back everyone fourfold. That's a lot of money. Uh, so it could have been no one. There's no money mentioned here, but to pay back fourfold would be uh, would would work out into a lot. So he was an evil man, and I think all in his heart and all was in his mind was seeing what he could get, seeing what he could get for himself. So it was. There's many people in the world today, and maybe you're in here this evening, maybe you're driven by the love of money. Like certainly, Zacchaeus was driven by the love of money. That was all was in his thought. And there's many people, I've seen it in different shops and that, that were in and it's unbelievable the amount of people today that's buying lottery tickets and buying gambling and doing whatever to try and make money, try and get rich quick. Here we see a man that had it all, and he still had no contentment. He still wasn't happy where he was at. As the, as the song goes, I tried the broken cisterns, Lord, but ah, the waters failed. Even as I stooped to drink, they fled me and milked me as I wailed. The chorus of that goes, now none but Christ can satisfy. There's none other name for me. There's love and life and lasting joy, Lord Jesus, found in thee. 
This man's problem wasn't physical, it was spiritual. His sin was keeping him from Jesus. Isaiah 59 and verse 2, it says, but, the, but iniquities have separated us from God. And that's the way of the world that our iniquities have separated us from God. We fall far short of God's standards. And yes, Zacchaeus was low, was small in stature, but he certainly didn't measure up till uh, God's standards in any one way. We come to verse 4. I, I, I really like this verse. Uh, and he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. I think this is, is just something so different. A rich man, a wealthy man, to be running down the street and scrambling up into a sycamore tree so that he could see Jesus. I'm sure he stumbled and fell along the way. Picture him just running in his purple robes. People in them days, that's what they wore, the purple robes, people that had wealth and a prominence about them. And just picture that man, and he was running down the street, all the crowds of people around him, scrambled up a tree, maybe tore his coat on his way up, maybe slipped and fell a time or two, but you know, he didn't care. He wanted to see Jesus. And I think that's a lovely picture because you've got to see that no matter what the crowds thought, no matter what the people thought, nothing was stopping him from going to see Jesus. Don't let friends, don't let money hold you back from coming to Jesus this evening. I plead with you, sometimes the thought of money and that sometimes friends can put pressure on, don't let that hold you back from coming to Jesus. Uh, we see, we see Zacchaeus, as I say, running and going to Jesus. And I trust and pray this evening that you'll not let anything hold you back from running to him. That's the searching sinner. And we're moving on now to verse 5. And in verse 5, we read, When Jesus came to the place that he looked up, and he saw him, and he said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for I must abide at thy house. This is the seeking Savior. Zacchaeus, you know, may have been searching, but you know it was really Jesus that was seeking. We see here whenever Jesus reached the spot of the tree that he looked up, and he called him by name, and he says, come down immediately, make haste, come down, because I must abide at your house today. Jesus took note of Zacchaeus, he stopped and he looked up and he called him by name. And you have to remember, as I said earlier, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. There was bound to be thoughts crowding his mind about what was ahead of him. But you know, still in all, he had that love for people. He had that compassion for Zacchaeus. And again, Christian brother and sister, this challenged me as well. Sometimes we get caught up so much in what we're doing and what life pushes in front of us, and I'm guilty of it more than anyone probably, that we cloud our vision and we don't see the people around us, people that need a word or a hand or a help around us. And you know how important it is that we take upon us what Jesus done here, took compassion upon this man, and he looked up and he saw him and bid him to come down, for he wanted to go and dwell at his house. There's a twofold command in this verse. He said to make haste and come down and get out of that tree there right now is the case. There's an urgency about it. In 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 2, it says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Can I urge you tonight, don't put it off. Don't be saying, I'll wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow might never come. You've heard George preaching here many, many, many times about how life can end very suddenly. And it does happen. And we do not know what tomorrow may bring or tonight may bring as far as that goes. So now is the accepted time. And now is the day of salvation. Can you imagine what must have been going through the minds of those people who were, were walking with Jesus that day? 
And how, how did Jesus know this boy by name? And why did he step under that particular tree? Or why did Jesus want that sinner to come down right away? So many questions and thoughts come through the people's minds, I'm sure. The second part of that command was, I must stay at your house today. I believe here we see that Jesus, what his ministry was all about, the love and the compassion for people. The Pharisees and religious leaders of that day were probably going ballistic about this Jesus saying that he was going to this, this man's house for, for tea because it's totally unheard of uh, in that day that anyone would even associate themselves with a tax collector, never mind a sinner. You never would go into their house and they would never be at your house. And definitely you would never sit down and eat and have a meal with them. And I believe that's what God and Jesus was teaching us here through this. This is the only instance throughout the four Gospels where we see of Jesus inviting himself along to someone's house. And you know, that's what his ministry is all about, that he came to seek and to save sinners from their sins. The searching sinner, seeking Savior, and now the spectacular salvation. Verse 6 to 10, we'll just read them again in verse 6 to 10. And he made haste, and he came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was going to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I will give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for as much as he also is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. In verse 6, we see there that Zacchaeus didn't waste any time getting out of that tree. Jesus said, jump. And Zacchaeus says, how high? Let me tell you, brother or sister, in here this evening, sinner friend, when Jesus says, move, you move, don't put it off. And you know, it tells you there that, that he was joyful, that he, he, he got out of the tree, he made haste, he got out of the tree, down out of the tree, and that he was joyful. This is where I believe that Zacchaeus actually trusted in Jesus. This is where I believe that he made the, that final step to say, I'm going to follow you, Jesus. He could have stayed up in the tree, but no, he didn't. He listened to the master, and he come down, and he took him at his word. And that's I, when I believe that he, he come down. He was overwhelmed with joy. Now, in contrast, as, as soon as we move on into verse 7, we see there that the people were, in a bit, were a bit more annoyed. In verse 7, we read, And they saw it, and they all murmured, saying that he was going to be guest with a man that is a sinner. What I see in this here is a challenge to my own heart and probably to us all that no one loved Jesus. The, the crowd probably when they heard about him even talking to Zacchaeus were probably cross. They probably went clean mad whenever they heard about him saying, I'm going to your house for dinner. This just shouldn't have happened. But you know it did because Jesus is the son of God. Note the wee bit that it says they all murmured. It doesn't exclude the disciples. They all murmured. I believe disciples and all were murmuring. And we're all guilty of that. I know I am sometimes about people maybe going to places where I think they shouldn't be and one thing and another. But you know, sometimes they could be in the will of the God far more than what I would be in the will of God. And we should be praying for them and indeed not murmuring about them. So just a wee word to our own hearts, hearts there. After the, the meal and the conversion, or the conversation with Jesus, we see in verse 8 that Zacchaeus was definitely changed. 
And you know, if ever you trust it in Jesus, there'll always be a change in your life. And that's one thing that you'll know for sure. We read in verse 8 that Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, that I half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. So there we see a massive change within this man's life. And, you know, it's out of love and gratitude for what Christ had done for him. Nothing else. It's just because of the workings of Christ within his life that the, the life changed immediately. Maybe tonight you're struggling with drink and wondering, how am I ever going to get off that? Or how could I become a Christian because of my life and different things that's involved in it? Don't worry about that. Just make the decision. Come, call upon Jesus, and he'll save you. Uh, and there you can see about Zacchaeus, the change that happened in his life immediately. He can change you too. He can take desires away that you once had, and he can change your life for the good. He made a confession in Romans 10 and verse 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Wonderful words there. Verse 9, Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to the house. Jesus was saying, This day is salvation come to that house. I don't know, don't be mistaken here. Some people read into this too far and they say that they've got household salvation. It doesn't say that. It says salvation come to the house. It's a case come to know the Lord, not his whole family. I don't know where he had a family. It doesn't tell us that. But it says, Zacchaeus, come. So that's how salvation come to the house. Don't be mistaken. And then we move on to verse 10, where we started at this evening. What a wonderful verse that Jesus comes to seek and to save that which was lost. Some wonderful words. And you know, I want to uh, challenge you this evening. Like Zacchaeus, you can have that change within your life. Come to the cross of Calvary. Jesus loves you. He died to save you. He shed his blood in Calvary. And he has promised that if you come to him this evening, that all those sins that you have, he'll remember no more. He loves you this evening. And I would urge you to, to trust in him and don't put it off. We've seen about the urgency within Zacchaeus' life to come and follow Jesus. Don't put it off. There is an urgency. And come to him tonight. Our closing hymn.